today I want to understand what high frequency trading is. So when you invest in the stock market, you ostensibly have two options. You can either buy and hold or buy and sell. Traditionally, stock investments are made around the concept of buying and holding over a long period of time. You hope eventually your share prices will go up and this will give you a reasonable rate of return. But the other approach is to buy shares and then sell them really fast. Buying and selling quickly means your margins are really low. You buy a stock for $5 and then sell it for $5 and a penny. But your trading volume is higher because if you buy a million of these $5 shares and sell them for a penny more each, you've made $10,000. And if you can do this multiple times over a day, trading in high volume and low margins, suddenly you can generate some serious revenue. So that's buying and selling really quickly with low margins and high volume. And in the early 2000s, it accounted for only about 10% of equity in the entire US stock market. 10 years later, Later, it's risen to 56%. It's gotten really big. So my first question was, how hard is it to buy in large volumes and sell really quickly? And I found there's always been some form of front running in the stock market, from the South Sea bubble to the stock market crash in the Great Depression. They all had elements of front running. Front running is simply knowing someone's about to buy a product or share and then quickly buying up as much as possible to sell it back to them at a slightly higher rate than you bought it for. And in order for someone to do front running successfully, they need to have a lot of upfront capital that they can invest quickly, which means this barrier to entry, large amounts of capital and the ability to absorb high risk, keeps front running from happening too much in our day-to-day -day lives. However, recently the rules have changed a little bit on Wall Street. You see, some investors have found a way to front run without the normally associated risks. The problem with investing has always been the gamble that your stock will still be valuable when you want to sell it. Indeed, more valuable when you sell it than when you bought it. And normally investors avoid this risk by taking a long view. You buy shares in a company and then hold it knowing the day-to-day -day stock prices will go up and down and up and down, but believing that the company over time will grow and thus your share price will go as well. High frequency traders on the other hand need to avoid this risk by being dead sure someone is willing to or about to buy their stock and that they're willing to purchase it from the high frequency trader for slightly more than he or she bought it for. But how do you make dead sure someone's gonna buy your shares? Lord knows if you go on Craigslist, people are fickle. High frequency traders get these assurances by getting the data first, by using speed, faster computers, faster algorithms, faster software, faster internet access. You see, high frequency traders don't compete against long-term investors, they compete against other high frequency traders. Each one racing against the other to buy up all the shares and then turn around and sell to the investor. It's so okay, but what makes a high frequency trader faster than the next one? Well, this is where it gets a little gray and it starts to look like the system is rigged for the normal investor. The simplest explanation for how they do this is called the market maker strategy, which means they place very small bid and offer orders on a large variety of stocks and then wait for a bite. They put a lot of hooks disguised by worms in the water waiting for the big fish. By selling a small amount, on a large variety of shares at slightly below market average, they're able to tell when an investor is interested in making an offer. Because by placing their shares for sale cheaply, they get the investors to buy theirs first. By laws, computers and investors have to buy the shares cheapest wherever they're found first before moving on to larger orders. So once the high-frequency trader gets a purchase of their shares, they then race down their own telecommunication cables and buy up all those shares. And just as the bank or investor signal is coming down the line, the high-frequency trader turns around and sells it to them at, you guessed it, a slightly above price than they bought it for. Now, in order for them to do this, we're talking some astronomical speeds. Because not only do they have to be faster than the bank signal or the investor signal, they have to be faster than other high frequency trader signals as well, as they're all competing for that front running gig. It's a game of speed. Whoever gets there first gets the gold. See, this is something you and I can't do. We don't have specialized software. We don't have a team of people laying our own telecommunications cable right next to the NASDAQ and BATS modems. In fact, not only can you and I not compete, but some of the big banks can't compete either. Right now, Merrill Lynch is hemorrhaging money due to high frequency traders. And the proponents of high frequency trading will say that it adds liquidity to the market, which is just a fancy word for saying it's easier to sell something when you want to sell it. And they'll also argue that high frequency traders close the gap in spreads and that they lower volatility, but that doesn't always happen as seen in the flash crash of May 2010, when in one day share prices were trading as low as a penny and as high as $100,000 a share. You see, the rapid rise of high frequency trading is something the market hasn't seen before, at least not in terms of market equity. And it may be too soon to tell whether this ultra fast algorithmic trading will benefit us or hurt us. And while it's true that it adds liquidity, it's also a system based on extracting profits without adding tangible value. 